part two of our acquired asked us to post the cash receipts journal to the general ledger. So we're going to take our fantastic looking CRJ and we're going to post it to the general ledger. I've given you blank formats for the general ledger. So let's use these and again, pay attention to the posting, to the referencing, to the adding up, etc., etc. So what we should be able to do now is post everything to the general ledger based on this information. We should not need to go back to the actual transactions themselves because that would mean that whatever you've done in here is actually not enough to tell the accountants or to tell you what's going on. And the reality is that this should be. To some extent, you can say in your cash receipts journal, your bank is basically your debit column. So your bank is going to be what's debited. Cash receipts means that you will be debiting the bank. And everything here is going to give you an indication of what's going to be credited. So your bank tells you the debits and your columns here tell you the credits. In this case, if we have anything in our sales column, bank would be the debit and sales would be the credit. Bank would be the debit, debtors control would be the credit. Bank would be the debit and anything in here would be your credit. So you can see the debits and the credits are, are coming back in. They haven't just disappeared. So let's go and post these. Let's take the first items we do will obviously be our, our totals, our big amounts. So let's go and, and post all of these and see what we land up with. The first thing we want to do is go and post our bank account because that indicates exactly how much money you've had in the bank during during the month, how much money you put in the bank. So my general journal, my general ledger, the very first account I'd start with is my bank. The moment we create a general ledger account, please go and number it straight away. Again, I said to you, your balance sheet, your assets, your um your liabilities, your equity, we always call B, so we name them as we go, we number them as we go, B1. And then we need to indicate that we're going to be posting this to B1. So you put a little B1 underneath the number. And we're going to be taking 7618, and we will be debiting that, because that is money that we put in the bank. Okay, this is in relation to receipts, and our folio will be our CRJ, our cash receipts. This will be done at the end of the month, so it'll be done on the 30th of June, and that's all we need. Instead of debiting each and every single transaction, we just have that one. Let's go and do the next one. Your next one, uh, your next column is going to be sales, and our sales for the month was 18,118. So my next general ledger account I'm gonna open will be sales. Again, I said number it first, your sales are your N numbers, so we number that straight away and we start with N1. Again, indicate here that I'll be posting that to N1. If something happens in an exam, it means that the marker can always tell exactly where you got numbers from. Let's say you got this number completely wrong and you thought it was 25 or you know 20,500. The examiner is not going to give you marks if you put 20,500 in there because he's looking for 18, right? But if you tell him where you got that number from, he can see where your mistake was and he'll still give you the marks for the stuff that you got right. So our 18118 was our sales for the month. And in terms of our sales, we credit them. 18118. It comes from our CRJ. Oops. And they are cash sales. And my 30th of June. My debtors control comes next. 2000, create debtors control. We number it straight away. Debtors control is an asset, so it gets a B, and I've got B1, which means I need to have B2. I immediately reference that, and that was 2000 for the month. My debtors control will be credited. 2000. And that comes from our CRJ. And that was cash amounts from the bank. And that again, the end of the month. I can put the end of the month because these are now all amounts that have been added up and I'm taking the total at the end of the month. I cannot take the total of the last column though because those two are co two completely different things. So I need to separate them, which is why we have our little folio column and why we deal with them separately. So now we deal with these one by one. 
Our first amount, our 50,000 Rand capital. So the 50 has gone into the bank. We now need to record the other side, our capital. So we will create a capital account. Capital is equity. So it gets a B number and we've used B2. So we now use B3. And we immediately identify where we've put that. And capital increases on the credit side. So we have 50,000. Also CRJ. And that I can put the specific date on because it was only one transaction. And that was the first. Oops. First of June. The last one. The staff loan of 500. I need an account for that. Oh, sorry, getting to the bottom of my stuff. We have a staff loan account. This will be a debtor to us because we've loaned someone money and they are paying us back. So this would be an asset, which means it is a B. We've used B3, so this would then be B4. And I go and reference that straight away. And that was for 500 and it was on the 14th. And again, that that will be credited. I can give the specific date because there was only one transaction. Came from my CRJ and it was for 500. So we've now posted all of our amounts. In an exam, it does help and it does allow you to check what you've done because you should find that all the amounts and all the columns should be referenced properly so that you can see that you have actually posted everything. Now, our general ledger will give us an indication of whether or not you've treated everything correctly as well because it gives us a chance to check ourselves. For every debit, there's a credit, right? And if we have done this correctly, our basic accounting equation should be in balance and our debits and our credits should be in balance. So if we add up our debit balances here and our credit balances, we should arrive at the same amount. So our 7618 and go and add this up. 118118, 2000, 50,000 and 500 gives us our 7618. And again, we know that this is in balance. So this is how we post our CRJ to the general ledger. It's not that complicated, but there are a lot of little bits and pieces, a lot of little details that you don't want to get wrong. So I would suggest that you take a look at that. I've given very nice, pretty much neater looking solutions so that you can go through it, check it, and make sure that your stuff is correct.